the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few and when we speak in the context of the harvest we're not just talking about the salvation of souls the language that is used or the metaphor that is used there is not just reaping fruit it's also redeeming territories so there are places that God wants to take over. There are places where God wants to establish his government. There are places God is seeking to express himself. There are many places like that. Where things are already ripe. Things have already been prepared for the Lord's counsel to find expression. But there are no men available on the ground to guarantee that what it is that God has already prepared. What it is that God has already ordained the seasons that the Lord has already orchestrated can find expression so in the context of priesthood you need to realize that priesthood is a partnership if you've been here since we started teaching it's an opportunity of partnership It's a privilege that God provides to us as mortals to step into the arena as co-creators with God People who join hands with God to see that what God has in his mind can find expression. So priesthood is a call to labor. Is a call to sacrifice. Is a call to uh, lose yourself in the hand of God. So that what it is that God wants to do with you becomes the priority of your existence. It was in John chapter 6 when the people were running after Jesus. It looked as if it is Jesus they were pursuing. But when they arrived before Jesus, Jesus said, You are not pursuing me because you saw the signs and the wonders. You are running after me because you ate bread. And then the bread that you ate now has digested. And now you are hungry again. So you are looking for bread. So it's not the sign. It's not the supernatural move of God that is attracting you. It is meat. It is bread that perishes. It is the superficial, it is the mundane, it is the useless things, the things that heaven considers vanity and vain that has orchestrated your pursuit. Sure, you know that that's the description of the church in modern day. With the wealth of spiritual resources and spiritual knowledge that God has opened unto us as a generation, it is sad to realize that the most, most we have done with these resources is that we have channeled those energies and those resources towards establishing our own agenda and satisfying our own lusts in the earth. So many people who are in the Christian space are praying and are pursuing God because they have something that they need and they believe it is only God that can provide it. So the labor that is happening within the Christian space is a labor for things that perish. The average Christian never calls themselves to a meeting to sit down to say, what is it that God actually wants? What, 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 what is the burden of the Lord? Why, why is God keeping me alive all this while? Is this just so that I can drive a car and eat food and get married, have sex and then die? If that is the only reason God is keeping you alive, then it means that your existence is a waste of resources. A waste of resources. He doesn't need you alive for all those things because those things are not going to add any value to the kingdom. There is no advantage coming from your life just because you are alive and you are married and you are having sex and you are eating food and then you are going to work. There is no advantage. No advantage. The reason God invests himself in men is so that those men will join him to labor for his agenda. That's why he invests himself. That's why he gives you Holy Ghost. That's why he gives you the privilege of being in a company like this where you labor in prayer. You are taught, you are taught the ways of prayer. You are taught the ways of intercession. That's why all those investments are being made. But you see, what is happening in modern day Christianity is despite the wealth of resources that God is channeling to our generation, the most we can show 
for those opportunities and those privileges that have been given to us is that we bought a car. The most we can show is that we got married. So all the programs we do in Christian space, all the things we do, all the testimonies we share, revolve around vanity. Vanity. Ask yourself, when last did somebody in your church come and share a testimony and the testimony was about the salvation of somebody's soul, about the redemption of a territory, about the deliverance of a lunatic, about the deliverance of the oppressed. When last? Those things do not bother us because we feel that the reason God is gathering us in church is so that we can get married. The reason God is gathering us in church is so that we can look nice, so that the world will not think that we are suffering. So even Christian space has been reduced to a place of entertainment. People are now videoing themselves during service, sharing paper. They will write on the paper, you look like a loaf of sliced bread. And they, are, they, feel, they feel it is marketing, that this is, this is what the Christian life is about. This is what Christianity is about. So people now are using church services for content on, on how instrumentalists talk during praise and worship and all kinds of things. We think that these things are jokes, but you see, it's because every labor that is happening within the Christian space in this generation is for meat that perishes. That's what we are laboring for, for the meat that perishes. Ask the average Christian, when last did you sit in a meeting with the Lord to say, Daddy, what is bothering you? When last? What is the pain in your heart for worry? Don't even forget worry. What is the burden in your heart for my family? Ask the average Christian. We can walk past Yahoo boys. We can walk past prostitutes. We can walk past teenagers that are so, that are in, in sin, and we feel no body. That's not how our ancestors lived. That's not how they lived. We don't feel anything. We, you see, we have become immune. We have been inoculated by vanity, by Babylon, by the lust of this world. We have been so inoculated. It's like anesthesia that Satan has successfully injected into us. So we are going around in this world like spiritual zombies. We cannot, we cannot discern the burden of the Lord for the things happening around us. It's just us. We are obsessed with ourselves. I want to eat up. I want to marry you. Uh, God, is God not seeing me? Is God not seeing that I'm suffering? What of the, the thing that is, that is a priority on the heart of God? We don't ask such questions. This is why Jesus was telling his disciples that first, you need to be able to realize that the harvest is plentiful. Not everybody can even see the harvest. Not everybody. Not everybody. In Isaiah chapter 55, he says, why spend money? How did he put it now? He says, why spend money on that which is not bread? Isaiah 55 verse 2. Why spend money on that which is not bread and that which does not satisfy? Isaiah chapter 55 verse 2. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for that, for what does not satisfy? We are laboring for meat that perishes. And this is why you may not like me. Eh? And I'm not out to be liked. I know the, I know the, the, the burden of my calling. Hmm? You may not like me. This is why we have many churches in this our country. And the country is not changing. Great churches with great membership with beautiful buildings. But it's not changing because our labor is around vanity. It's around the meat that perishes. And you see, that's not what priesthood is designed for. The dimension of priesthood that is called prayer, the essence is not to labor for what perishes. It's to labor, labor for what is eternal. And this is what the people in the negative supernatural understand. That's why my sister... Those in the negative supernatural do not care if they are in poverty. 
Is there any native doctor that you have seen that stays in Lekki? Eh? They don't care if they are in poverty or squalor because the driver is not what perished. Is that they can bring something that is eternal into, into time. And whatever price they need to pay for it, they will pay for it. They will pay for it. I was listening to Amanda when she started that her, or she had an uncle who throughout his lifetime he did not eat starch. That was his consecration. And for an Urobomano or an Isoko man that you meet that does not eat starch, it's either he didn't grow up here. Because there's something the Lord put upon starch, it's Levuzava. If if it is properly made and have you heard of what they call yellow yellow? Huh? That's starch and ogreri. Have you heard do they say it? Huh? It's anointed by Jesus. Then the man who is from this place now says that he does not eat starch because he's committed to an assignment. But the average Christian cannot even fast. Cannot fast. But there are people who have made up their minds on the negative supernatural to say, this thing, even though it is my legitimate right, I will not touch it because I want to be able to bring something eternal to bear on the lives of men. Priesthood is for labor. That's what I'm saying to you tonight. It's for labor. And you are joining God in partnership to labor to see that his heart is satisfied. The things that are his bodies are established. And this is what I was trying to explain to you last week. That if you look at the way the tabernacle was set up, the initiating point into the whole process of priesthood was death. The initiating point. The first thing you needed to do as a priest was to come to the brazen altar. That was the first place. That's the first item you meet as a priest. Before you go to the brazen lever, brazen there just simply means bronze. And that altar was a place of sacrifice. That's where it was. The animals were killed. That's where blood was spilled. And God does not do things because he doesn't have work to do. The reason that altar was made of bronze was because bronze, if you know your metals in the Bible, you will know that bronze is for judgment, silver is for redemption, gold speaks about the nature of God. That's what your metals were in the Bible. Bronze is for judgment, silver is for redemption, and then gold spoke of the nature of God, the nature of God. Indicative of the fact that anything that is made of gold is, is of very great quality. Great quality. Gold is considered the supreme metal in the family of metals. The supreme metal in the family of metals. Because with gold, the more you expose it to fire, the, the purer it becomes. The, the value of gold increases by being exposed to fire. So the altar on the outside that the priest will first of all encounter was an altar of judgment. And I said to us last week that what was judged is the flesh. You die at that altar. Because the primary thing, if you study the priesthood carefully, the primary thing that the priest is laboring to do is to raise incense. That's what priesthood is about. It's about incense. Everything in the priesthood is about incense. That's what the priest is laboring to do. The reason he needs to be purified. The reason he needs to wear special clothes. The reason he needs to be separated from his people unto God is just so that he can burn incense. He was raised for incense. The first incense that he burns is the incense of judgment. His flesh dies. So when the animals are killed, the Lord will smell a sweet-smelling savour that will ascend to him. That's the first incense that the priest offers. It's incense. 
So God has to, has to smell the fragrance of your dying. Many have not died. That's why they can't labor. Because at the altar of bronze, you die to your own ambitions. You die to your own agenda. You die to the world. You die to self. You die to Satan. And out of that dying, a fragrance rises. Notice that at the brazen altar, which is also called the altar of the burnt offering, the offering is burnt to ashes. Complete ashes. Is that ash that the priest has to gather every day? He will gather the ash out, readjust the fire, because the, 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 the criteria is that that fire must be perpetually burning. Perpetually burning. It must never go out at that altar. 